welcome back guys to the channel um excuse my voice i've got a bit of a cold this morning it's um pretty cold so i'm just doing a quick review right i bought this launch obd scanner quite nice uh, it's a crp 129 premium version um my diagnostics uh decided to shit itself the other night and um it doesn't work anymore so i had a delphi uh professional system from back when i had the garage um so i'm in my wife's uh golf gt tdi at the moment it's got a uh, engine management light on not sure what's going on with it so we're going to just check it so i haven't actually opened it yet so let's see how user friendly it is from from opening it up um so yeah right let's uh, let's crack on with it well, I'm going to try and do this one-handed while holding the camera. Oh, it's freezing out here today. It's snowing on it. Right, um, what have we got in here? That's for moisture. We've got the OBD cable to serial connector. And then we've got a USB cable here. For charging purposes, I imagine. Um, but it should power it. And there's a SD card adapter in here. I think they're for updates, etc. Right. So I'm gonna just uh, put the camera down, set it up, and then I'll be back on. Right. So that's uh, that's booted up now. I'll just turn the radio off. Right. So that's booted up now. Now the engine management light's on. Let me just show you guys. I want to start the car. Uh, ignore the tire pressure monitor etc got one bulb out but the engine management light is on so i want to get to the bottom of that um i've got a strange fumes coming into the car so i've got a feeling that the dpf's got a split in it um dpf's not on the car anymore but it's been welded um and mapped so anyway switch it back off back onto ignition Right, so if you look at the interface, very simple. You've got diagnose settings and help, right? So it's not it's not touch screen guys. So you've got to go like so, hit okay. Diagnose, that's a car beeping at me. Um, right, so we can scan it. Find a make a model. I've got to say this is quite quite easy to use like i said i've not i've not used this before my delphi was seriously complicated v1160 diagnose i'm guessing it's picked the car up check your files please wait okay vehicle scan right let's just do a complete vehicle scan is it vw up no it's not um Um, it's a bit, um, it's a bit rubbish that it's not in order, but yeah, as long as it's there. Yeah, okay. Same manual. Right, engine electronics, transmission, brakes. Right, so I guess an engine. It's pretty, it's pretty quick. It doesn't lag when you push the buttons. Which is quite good. Let's see what this says. Don't want to speak too soon. I did loads of reviews on this, by the way, before I bought it. Between the you got the CRP one two three premium, and you got the one two nine premium, and then you got the higher models um, that, that basically, you know, professional level. You know, you can you can do quite a bit on this anyway. 
Right, read DCT codes. What's it say? Read new metal button. Exhaust pressure sensor. Okay. So, as I said, I've got a feeling the DPF's got a split in it. So hence the pressure sensor, which is a DPF pressure sensor, sits on top of the DPF. Um, I'm gonna clear it and then see what happens. Take a picture of that as well. <clears throat> yeah, I, I do like this. See that down the bottom. I'm trying to look at this through the camera screen. Ah, oh, okay. So, let's see if the focus still exists. Oh, it's still there for some reason. <coughs> so, what I'm going to do is take the key out. Go back. Right. So, right, as you can see, engine management light's gone. I'm gonna take the key out. Now, the thing with these things are, if it's a permanent fault, it will come back straight away. If it's an intermittent fault, it won't come back straight away. Uh, so, I know it's an intermittent fault because the engine management light used to disappear and come back. So, clutch down. Engine management light hasn't gone. Right, so, it's not come back. So I know it's an intermittent fault. Now the, the fault came, the fault came up um, on a seriously cold day. I was going to work at like that 5 a.m., 6 a.m. And as soon as I fired the car up, it popped up. And um, I'm not sure if it's a one-off thing or whatnot, but I'm going to keep an eye on it. So yeah. So just going back to this quickly. Uh, let's go through the other motions. So let's uh, finish off with the diagnosis. So you diagnose, let's see what the OBD, EOBD is. You got, right, so you got no DCT codes, which is good. The readiness completed, the readiness not completed. Supported data stream, okay. So it's like a monitor status. Uh, read code, let's see if it's got any codes. I'm guessing it scans a whole ECU. Exhaust pressure sensor A circuit low pending. Okay. So it stored it. It's, it's telling me that um, there's a pro there was a, there was a problem whether it still is or not. Let's do an O2 sensor test actually. Because um, one sensor one. Okay. So it does not support it because. Probably got the DPF pressure sensor instead. So you can see it's got um, onboard monitoring, EGR monitoring bank one. No, I know for a fact it's got an EGR valve. Component ID. Status fail. Again, guys, I haven't actually um, spent any time with this, so I'm just um, doing this video as I open the box. <clears throat> so it's got a, it's got a bunch of stuff you can do. Um, review DCT, review data stream. You've got freeze frame data. Um, you got. You can delete your data, you can upload records. Reset, right, so you can reset your battery change. You can reset your brake reset, reset your oils. Uh, your steering angle sensor, you can also do your, um, depending what, what vehicles, is vehicle specific, you can also do your, um, electronic calipers reset so when you're doing your brakes you can um, you can put them into service position uh, 
uh, language, unit of measure, your beepers, so it's just general settings of um, of the unit. So it's a simple unit, I must say, it's a simple unit where my Delphi was so complicated, you, you can go in, you can drill down into modules, etc. Um, but that was that, that was like a two grand, two and a half grand piece of kit, you know, which um, sometimes you just need something simple like this to just get the job done. So it took five minutes, where normally on the Delphi, it'd take me like 10 minutes to try and diagnose the fault because you just want to go through different modules and uh, want different pieces of information. The other thing about the Delphi, it would never pick the car up properly. It would, you'd either have to put a VIN number in or, you know, um, update the database. And then that's what I've done. I, I updated the database last time and it just wanted like 600 quid to do it. And I thought, no, I'm not, not paying it. it was, this I paid 200 and, 275 quid from Amazon. And um, yeah, it's, it's what I need. You know, it's nice, it's compact and um, I can keep it in the car. Um, I'm going to switch the car off because some of these modules are not not working properly but I'm guessing that's because the car's running right so let's see what this is oh, I am readiness right so since the DC DC uh, C codes were cleared it just tells you uh, what the drive cycle is etc which I only started it once so the vehicle does not support this so that's not a good thing is it um, data stream So let's calculate lower value. Engine coolant temperature at the moment is 59 degrees. I have been out for a drive, so that's about right. Uh, intake manifold pressure. So I wonder if I start the car. There you go. Right, so that's a bit better, isn't it? So this gives you live data stream. Okay. So what else does it give you? Intake air temperature air flow rate so that will be for your mass flow sensor your throttle position so that should shoot up so mass air flow shoots up absolute throttle position sensor so I'm guessing it's running at 83.9% OBD requirements distance travelled while uh, mill mill is your uh, engine management light it's activated fuel rail pressure equivalent ratio oxygen sensor voltage which we know it doesn't support so um, it's flagging up a fault for the DPF pressure sensor so okay like I said not a bad unit you've got to you can view it in graphical the graph status uh, or data streams of the page calculate lower value so okay, let's just take engine coolant temperature, right? We know it's a supported feature. Right. So that's gone up from 59 to 62. So difficult to understand because I've never done any work with uh, the graphs on, on the engine management side of it. But um, I imagine it's working. So yeah, this is more than what I want it for anyway. I want it more for just, you know, I come across a lot of cars with issues, errors. And another thing is a, a, lot, of, um, a lot of systems don't support uh, Asian cars like Japanese and you know Chinese cars etc and this does this does a lot this has been known to do the better side of that okay so your engine RPM there you go it's working a bit better So that's maximum I revved to 2, 5, let's see if I rev to 3, can't because um, it's, got a, it's got a launch, Just believe it or not the car can't do launch, launch control, so it doesn't, it only lets me rev to 2.5 um, as it clutches down, it's not a bad feature, it works well actually, 
Okay, so all that's working. So yeah, that's that, that's all there really is to it. Uh, onboard monitoring. Let's have a look at that. EGR monitor. Okay. So yeah, you've got a. Let's go vehicle information. See what it gives you. Gives you the VIN number. Gives you the ID. Okay. So that's not bad, is it? It gives you. It gives you quite. It's it's quite informative. It's easy to use. It's not the most expensive thing in the world um, so yeah it's, uh, it's it's not bad at all I do like it I won't be returning it I will be keeping this actually so yeah that's it guys if you guys need a, a half decent um, diagnostic machine uh, go for the 129 don't go for the 129 non premium because it doesn't do half of the things that these do if you think this is limited then um, do not buy the 129 on its own Right guys, so a uh, short video, but yeah, that's um, that's uh, that's the launch CRP129. Good bit of kit actually, quite impressed with it. So like I said, I'll be keeping it. The only thing I would have um, would have wanted launch, if you're listening, is uh, you should have included a carry case for this. I know it's robust and it's all padded up, so it's hard to break. But it'll be nice to have a little carry case. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to source a little carry case for this, so everything's in one one place. Um, cables etc because I don't fancy carrying the box around with me. So Lord if you're listening make a carry case for it please and um, yep yeah, keep an eye on my other videos if you're wondering what's happening with the Subaru I've got the lambda sensor this morning thanks again Matt at MB developments um, nicely packaged I'll, I won't be installing it today I've got to work shortly um, I'll probably do it tomorrow and then the car will be back together ready for mapping um, plus it's freezing out there so we need some serious motivation to get in the garage or at least an hour's worth of time before my heater kicks in so anyway yeah that's it guys uh, like and subscribe as usual any uh, any comments or questions down below please i'll see you on the next one guys have a good day